There's not a mountain to talk There's not a problem so small That Jesus can't resolve In time he'll get involved Cause my God he cares about us So wait on the Lord Wait on the Lord Wait on the Lord And He'll renew your strength How many of you believe it if we wait on Him? There's not a night too dark A journey too long to impart Jesus will see you through In time he'll make you new Cause my God he cares about us So wait on the there's a promise if we wait. Wait on the Lord. God will stay steadfast and we'll wait on your promise, oh God. Wait on the Lord. Because your word says you'll renew us. You'll renew your strength. That's why we'll wait. Wait on the Lord. We'll wait on you, Jesus.
God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. I, uh, I've always tried to judge a service as far as the my part of speaking the word of the Lord by how strong that God dealt with me about it, how strong I feel that word. And I can tell you that the Lord finally let up on me about two something this morning. And uh, I feel very strong in the Holy Ghost, what I'm getting ready to talk to you about. Amen. Matter of fact, I feel <clears throat> strong enough to say that I believe that we have the attention of a lot of stuff way beyond this building today. And so I will speak to you what I feel like the Lord has said and then I always believe that he will confirm his word with signs following. I give honor to the Mangan family and the staff and ever. It's just tremendous people. Amen. And this, this family, this church has been extremely kind to me and I'm thankful for their relationship. I was very blessed when our paths crossed and I can remember uh, the first time I ever preached because the times where the Kilgore actually heard me teach at a meeting and requested that I talk about equality fivefold ministry and little I, I would have never thought that it would have developed and grown into what it is but I'm thankful for it and, and I honor you here today God bless you amen Daniel chapter 10 verse 13 I'll read two verses of scripture verse 13 and verse number 20 amen but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in twenty days, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I am come unto thee? And verse 20, And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia, and when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you today about the prince of the sixth kingdom the prince of the sixth kingdom now Lord I understand the magnitude and what's happening in the spirit realm here today so by the authority of your name and your word we bind it in the name of Jesus Christ give me clarity of mind and of spirit all of us God give us strength here today I ask that your grace be multiplied upon us today. Let the angels of the Lord be in this building. Let them stand ready in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I... Uh, a few weeks ago, I was uh, I was telling somebody this the other day, and I want to make sure I don't do the same mistake. I told them I was sitting at the bar, <laughs> and I had to insert quickly kitchen bar, you know, the little island deal, you know, and. Uh, I was sitting there and was really needing a word from God. And I, I felt led to read the story of this text here about the Prince of Persia and Daniel and the prayer and all. And start reading it. I've read it. I base a lot of my belief in spiritual warfare from the, that story. And first of all, if you're really apostolic, you got to believe 
in the angelic world. I don't mean the mystical, spooky stuff, but the book of Acts is full of that stuff. And so I was reading down through there, and all of a sudden it kind of started making a little sense. I, I seen something that really caught my attention, especially in the spirit. Um, you know, Daniel's introduced to us by interpreting a dream that the king couldn't even remember. And he starts talking about this image, and he gives description of that image. And he tells the king what it stood for. And when I looked at the story of Daniel in prayer and Gabriel coming to him, I began to realize that it is in a chronological order. You know, it's the Babylonian Empire, it's the Medes and the Persian, it's the Grecian Empire, the, uh, you know, uh, Rome. And then finally we come down to the fifth kingdom, which is what we would refer to as the kingdom of the Antichrist, the feet of clay and of iron. Amen. And so <clears throat> when we understand that, then when this angelic being comes to Daniel, he makes statement that uh, I'd have been here a little earlier, but the prince has withstood me. And <clears throat> um, matter of fact, when I leave here, the prince of Persia withstood me. Now, Michael, your prince came, but now I'm going to leave, but the prince of Grecia shall come. So I was sitting there that day, and I got to looking at that, and I began to realize that that is giving us the order of that image. And so what caught my attention was, is that the prince of Grecia, the prince of Persia. Now, <clears throat> I think that, and hopefully this will make sense, that there is a principle that's been introduced to us that before a physical king ever manifest, the prince of that kingdom begins to work. And so if you watch what happens here, uh, now I've tried to study it and look at it, and I'm not quite sure how and where all Daniel was at at the particular time. Some believe he was still in Babylon. He was carried over here. Some believe he was already over with Darius and them. But whatever it is, there's a principle that begins to happen that God is showing him that before a kingdom ever becomes a reality, the prince of that kingdom begins to work. And so I watched this order. Before... <clears throat> Grisha ever manifested, the prince of Grisha was already at war, already working. And so now we watch as the spirits, the princes, the captains of host, begins to, begins to be an activity way prior to a physical king or the physical manifestation of that kingdom. So I'm watching all this, and I'm seeing it all, and I begin to realize that, okay, if that's the case, then that means... Whatever kingdom is left, which I understand would be the kingdom of the Antichrist. Whatever kingdom is left, then that means that the spirit of it, the prince of it, not so much the man or the king or the no. kingdom yet, no. but the prince, the spirit of it, is already at work. Now, I'm going to come back to this here in just a second because John tells the church as far as I know, he's the last living original apostle. He tells them, for already the spirit of the Antichrist doth work. Not the man of sin, not the son of perdition, but the spirit of it is already at work. Now, if that's the case, then that means that we're already battling in the spirit against the, the kingdom that's coming down the road, that last kingdom that Daniel seen. Amen. And so now I'm going to tell you, uh, I don't know about you, but being raised in the church, they used to scare the devil out of us every watch night service. 
<laughs> about the Antichrist and the mark of the beast, and this is probably going to be the year. And you know, I mean, Henry Kissinger was the Antichrist, and JFK was the Antichrist, and I, I don't know who they'll pick next. Amen. But I mean, it was just like. So I, 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 I must confess that I kind of grew up, and then when I began to read in the Scripture how the Antichrist is going to work, I'm like, wow. I mean, I want you to understand, when, when Daniel refers to this and is given description of the first four kingdoms, he gives them animal names and gives them a character trait and all this stuff. But when he got to that fifth kingdom, he said, this is vicious. I, I don't even know what to call it. It's, it's, it's ferocious. It stomps and devours. And then he goes on to talk to us about how he would work. He said he would speak great words against the Most High and seek to wear out the saints of the Most High. And so I'm here today to tell you that that spirit is very active right now. Present tense, it is very active. Now, I'm going to take a little dive here and I'll, we'll go back up here in just a second. Amen. But this morning, the Lord began to deal with me, or last night actually, began to deal with me about the term where John uses about the spirit of the Antichrist. Now, I recognize that he's dealing with Gnosticism. He's dealing with people that believed that there was nothing tangible. A part of the Gnostics' doctrine was is that everything is logos. <clears throat> it's just thought or expression of thought, meaning that uh, the way they would teach is you're not really sitting here today. A God somewhere is just thinking that. And so that's as far as you can go. Well, <clears throat> John, again, when he writes his gospel, there's a reason why <clears throat> that the other gospel writers take it back to ancestry and stuff. But John says, no, for us to really understand who Jesus is, then we're going back to the beginning. Because in the beginning was the word, Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. Well, all the Greeks and all the philosophers and all the Gnostics, they agree with that. But that's as far as they went. It's just thought or expression of thought. But John said, no, it goes beyond that. Because now John tells us in the 14th verse, and the Logos became flesh and dwelt among us because there's a strong move to remove any humanity, any flesh out of the picture because after all, if you're not really flesh, then you're not responsible for your actions. I mean, you didn't sin. A God somewhere thought that. And so John understood the detriment of all that. He also understood the detriment of denying the atonement. And so he deals very strongly with this. Now, when he gets into it in his epistle, he starts in. He said, now, this is how we know if they're of God and not of God. And he said, now, you need to try every spirit because there's going to be a lot of stuff tell you that it's of God and it's the Holy Ghost. But he said, you need to learn how to try the spirits. Everyone that does not confess that Jesus is in the flesh he said, he is of that spirit of the Antichrist. Stay with me here just a second. Amen. Now, when he gets into that, he goes on. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So we know that the spirit of truth is working and the spirit of error. What people fail to realize is that John just lets you know that the spirit of the Antichrist is a spirit of error. Now, tie that in to what? He says, Daniel says, that he would speak great words against the Most High. He would seek to wear out the saints of the Most High. Meaning that he would constantly try to bring air into it. Constantly warring against the spirit of truth. Mm. Constantly the bombardment against your mind. Did God really say that? Hath God said. This is where it all started to begin with. This is the serpent spirit. It's always a question mark. Always questioning. You know, the gospel in God's always been real simple. See that tree over there? Yeah. Leave it alone. Don't eat the fruit of it. The day you eat the... I mean, you don't have to have a PhD to figure that one out. 
You don't have to break that down in Hebrew and Greek and whatever else you want to break it down and give us all your intellectual approach. It's very simple. Just stay away from that tree. Don't eat the fruit of that tree. I mean, come on, folks. And then here comes the serpent. Now, believe whatever you want to believe. I don't think he was some creepy, crawly snake up in the tree. I, I read a little Jewish deal one time, and they teach very strong that it was an angel of light that came. And he appeared as an angel of light. And he said, hath God said, and that's always the spirit of the Antichrist and the spirit of error. It always starts with the question to get you to question. Boy, it's quiet right now. To get you to question what God has said. I've had people ask me, how do you know the difference between the voice of the devil and the voice of God? Well, it's pretty simple to me. Every time the devil's ever talked to me, I've always had a question mark at the end of it. When God talks, it's an exclamation point. Boom. There it is. <clears throat> well, praise God. Now, this is how it works. This is how, you know, we're thinking that the spirit of the Antichrist, the Antichrist, you know, he's going to come with a big rubber 666 step it on your forehead and all that stuff. His spirit, the prince, is already working. Already. Now, I looked at it a while ago, and I understand that before there's a king, there's a prince. Yeah. Hmm. And so the prince of this is already working. Now, the king is going to manifest here a little later, but the prince of it's already working. I feel very strong in the Holy Ghost to remind this church. Now, I, 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 honestly, I'm, I'm not trying to impress you with a, a sermon here today. I feel a sense of responsibility, and I take that very serious here. But I feel in the Holy Ghost to remind you that this church is an extreme target for what I'm talking about. A few years ago, I told you what the Holy Ghost said. This church is a bastion of the oneness apostolic message. Now, if you don't think the Antichrist, the spirit of it, has got you right in its crosshairs, and the way he's going to work against you is he's going to try to keep bringing air. He'll just keep warring against your mind, warring against your mind. The man of God can walk up here and teach and preach. And before you get home, he's already warring against your mind. Does God really say that? I think I'll Google it and find out what somebody else is going to say. Amen. And it's just a constant bombardment. Is this making sense to anybody here today? Amen. Now, I, I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. Brother Mangan, you are a target, above targets. I, and I'm not trying to... But they, there has to be, and I know you already got it, surrounding you. Tremendous intercessors. Yes. People that know how to pray and to protect you and your family and this congregation. There's a constant bombardment, a constant bombardment of air and stuff that just keeps coming and it keeps coming and it keeps coming. Look, you don't have to lie to me. I don't care. I'm headed home tomorrow. Amen. And it just keeps coming, and it keeps coming, and it keeps coming, and it keeps coming, and it keeps coming. And it's not going to let up. It's going to intensify because we're getting closer to the king now. We're getting closer to the physical manifestation of all of this. Praise God. I'm here today to remind you that you're an apostolic church. The preaching the other night from Brother Mangan. Now, I'm, I'm going to get to it. Now, understand what it means when it says anti-Christ. Just break it down. Anti is pretty self-explanatory. Christ, Christos, means anointed or anointed flesh. Have you ever really looked at the statement beginning with the book of Acts? The acts of the anointed ones. Anything that is anointed by God, any anointed one of God, becomes a target of that. So everything that the apostles had, everything that the apostles did in the book of Acts, guess what? The Antichrist comes against that. He's anti that, praise God. He's anti-prayer. He's anti-apostles' doctrine. He's anti, I mean, he's anti-miracles. He's anti-whatever. You just have to understand, this is how he works. 
You start learning what is of God and what is not of God by what people confess. When they try to tell you that this doesn't work and it's not real and you don't have to, they're telling you that they are not of us. Well, praise God. I'm trying to be really nice here. That's, that's the spirit of air. That's the spirit of the Antichrist that's working. Listen, if you really want to meet it, come to San Francisco. They'll blaspheme against everything. They hate everything that's truth and righteous. That's the spirit of it. I wake up every day staring the Antichrist and the spirit of it in the face. Whoo. I'll remind you that at that table, we're sitting apostolic preachers across from the Antichrist. Now, I know it's sounding really negative and down right now, but I haven't even got to the prince of the sixth kingdom. Mm. We are sitting across. There is a table that's prepared. There is spiritual strategies that are going on. And I'm going to tell you something. If you think we're going to win in the end time against that spirit by a bunch of carnality and shallow stuff. You better wake up because you're in the big leagues now. And anything that is standing as truth, I don't say we have all, I've heard people, we got all the truth. Well, we got truth in a lot of things, but there's always more truth to be revealed. But the deal is, I'm just telling you, you be, we are targets, I, and I'm not trying to be negative here. We're targets. Every time you come to church, there's spiritual activity that's taking place. That spirit's trying to work. Now, I want to be kind when I say that. You may be surprised who becomes the mouthpiece of that spirit. It don't mean that they're evil or whatever, but I'm going to tell you something. In a carnal moment, Simon Peter, you can fall from being blessed to being Satan. I mean, one moment, blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, and six verses later, get thee behind me, Satan. Why? Because the will of God, truth was being expressed. I'm on my way to die. And Peter said, that don't fit the way I got figure it figured out. Bless God, I'm not going to let you die. I'll, I'll, I'll kill every one of them. We're going to raise up an army. He's thinking out of his own carnality. It's coming out of his own human spirit. This is not revelation coming to him. This is not the will of God. And he's referred to as Satan, which means mine adversary. I'm just going to be honest with you. I know in my life that there's been times I've been an adversary to God because out of my own thinking, out of my own reasoning, out of my own view of certain things, I've spoken things in a moment of carnality that I knew was not in agreement with what God was saying. Now, we talked about being one with God. And the basic way to be one with God is I'm one with the word of God. I'm not going to be in disagreement with the word of God. There's power in the word of God. That is the one thing that the Antichrist despises. That's the one thing that the serpent hates. It's the word. Woo. Ah, oh, help me, Jesus. So, man, I mean, I'm like, oh, great, great. Now we get to fight the Antichrist, great. Man, he's vicious. He's ugly. He's mean. Horrible. Powerful. Ooh. Like, oh, great. And sitting at the kitchen bar that morning, the Lord said, Mark, You've made a grave mistake because all you've seen in the story is five kingdoms. But there's another kingdom. It's the sixth kingdom. <laughs> the sixth kingdom? Yeah, that stone cut out of the mountain without hands. That when it hit that image, the feet of it, oh, you know, the one that's going to stomp everything. When it hit the feet of it, 
It destroyed the image, brought the kingdoms down, and it began to grow and become a great mountain, and it filled all the earth. He said, that is the next kingdom that's coming after the kingdom of the Antichrist. I'm showing you, now this is me, the millennial reign. I'm showing you this great kingdom that's going to rule for a thousand years. But tell me, what is the prince of that kingdom? Boom. Oh, he's the prince of peace. Mm -hmm. You need to get your eyes off the prince of the fifth kingdom. And you need to start focusing on the, the prince of the sixth kingdom, which is the prince of peace. Now that prince is going to become a king. One of these days, the Prince of Peace is going to be King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He'll manifest his kingdom. Now watch it. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show it to you. If the spirits and the princes of the kingdom start working prior to the physical manifestation of it, then that means that the spirit of the Antichrist is not the only thing active and working right now. It means that the spirit and the Prince of Peace and the spirit of truth is working also right now. Woo. Man, I got to look at this morning at all those verses. Isn't it amazing? It's Rome. It's a mixture of that feet of brass or clay or iron and all that. It's Rome and new kingdoms, new whatever. And I was watching all that. And then I got to reading over there. Paul's addressing Rome, Rome, Rome. And may the God of peace Bruce Satan under your feet. You put on the, you have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now understand peace does not mean tranquility in the scripture. It means, uh, how can I say it? Uh, welfare, prosperity. I'm not talking about financial, but prosperity. It includes that too, but prosperity. It means your well-being and all this stuff. So it's not like he's moving you out of the battle and he's moving you out of any spiritual warfare. But that means in the midst of all of that, you can stand with your feet shod and you can stand against the opposition and you can stand against the spirit of error and you can stand against the spirit of the Antichrist and not be moved by it. Because Daniel went on to say, and they that knew their God shall be strong and do exploits. So God is looking for people that wants to know him. That's the tongues of interpretation this morning. That wants to draw nigh unto him. That wants to get it settled in their mind. This is truth. I believe this. Woo. Let me hasten here real quick. You know, I got to look at all this and then, uh, boy, it's amazing. Jesus said to the seven and all them, I want you to go down to these cities. Go into the cities when you get there. Go into their houses. And here's what I want you to say. I want you to say, repent, for the kingdom is at hand. And then when you go into their homes, I want you to walk in and say, peace. Speak peace into this home. And if they are worthy to receive it, which means if they will accept it, if they will believe it, if they're worthy to receive it, I will abide there. But if they don't receive it, Go on down the road because there's another house somewhere that will receive it. Then I found something very interesting about that. That speak peace in there. Jewish thought is they tie that together with the blessing, which means when you walked in and you said peace, you were pronouncing the blessing of God upon that house. We're going to have to learn how in the end time to bless the house and not curse it. Just, just, just hear me. I, I, this got a hold of me, you know. It ought to be when we see each other, it ought to be. I bless you today. Bless you. I bless you today. I bless your house. Woo. God wants there to be prosperity. He wants you to be healthy. He wants you to be well. He wants to abide in this house. 
So I speak today in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, you're a target. Yes, the spirit of the Antichrist is working against you. Yes, the spirit of error will never leave you alone. I get all of that. But at some point in time, you just have to say, you know what? I want the, I want the Prince of Peace to work in my life. I want the spirit of truth to work in my life. I want the blessing of God to be in my life spiritually and emotionally and physically and financially and relational. I want the blessing of God to abide. Come on, somebody. I want the blessing of God to abide here. <clears throat> Got to learn how to bless the house. Bless the house. I bless you. So here's, here, I'm close. here's what I've been praying. Lord, I've sure had enough turmoil in my mind. I've sure had a lot of attacks against my mind. I was uh, preaching that, I don't know why I'm going to tell this, but I will. I was preaching at an apostolic conference, and I was talking about where God proclaimed to Moses, they seen my glory in Egypt. And they seen it in the wilderness. They would have seen it in the promised land. They didn't believe. But my glory shall fill all the earth. God began to deal with me. I put you in this city. I put you in this state. This is your promised land. You got Canaanites. You got everything imaginable. Still had them there. But this is the promised land. If you'll just focus on my glory. If you'll just know that the same God that brought you out, took you through, will take you in. If you'll just see that. I'll confess, man, I was too busy seeing all the stuff. And then the Lord said, well, you've got to be careful because if you're not, you'll despise the land and defile it just like they did. You'll speak evil against it. And so the Lord began to deal with that preached it through the state and preached an apostolic conference trying to challenge those home missionaries. Whatever city God called you to, if you'll go, if you'll go, the yes. glory of the Lord will be there. Yes. You're God's covenant people. That's why he placed you. Yes. He put you at the crossroads of the world. He put you where all the trade routes were. He put you there so you could bear witness and they yes. could see what a one God covenant person looked like. Yes. So I was trying to preach it and, and all of a sudden I... Uh, I I got talking about spiritual opposition, and next thing I know, everything went to swirling in the room, and and I thought, oh boy, this is not <laughs> this is not good, <laughs> and I mean it was like I'm collapsing. So I just stopped, and said, I need y'all pray. I feel like I'm about to fall, and, and uh, I, you know I don't mind dying. I just don't want it on YouTube. And so, I, I, I don't know what happened. They took me to the back and they run an EKG and nothing wrong here. Blood pressure's perfect, sugar's 90 something. I don't know. One of the paramedics told me, he said, when I got to you, my son-in-law was there and my son-in-law said, I'm telling you. He said, you, 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 you. they got you in that chair and he said, you'd slumped over. He said, the paramedic kept looking, saying, I'm not getting a pulse or something. I'm not getting a pulse. I'm not getting a pulse. And uh, I don't know. I want to spiritualize everything. But, boy, I had all the tests run and went home. But when I got home, and you know, all the what ifs and all this stuff starts in and fear and, and all. And I'm, you know, just, and... Uh, Somebody called me, I have a lot of faith and trust in I, their walk with God and said, well, how does it feel to take the best shot the enemy has and make it? I said, what you talking about? The best shot he's got is death. He hits you as hard. Now, when I got up from the chair, you know, they're trying to get me out of there, paramedics and all. Now I'm mad. 
And here's why I'm mad. I'm mad because how did you get to me? In this apostolic arena, how did you even get to me? <laughs> now I'm mad. You follow me. You come in here. I begin to identify it. This stuff is real, folks. It's, it's real. It's real. And so man, time I got home, I'm kind of like, you know, and my wife even asked me, how could the enemy get to you with all those men of God and all that stuff? So, you know, we kind of went through the process and, you know, let's eliminate some stress. And so we've been doing that. But I still kind of like, what in the world, God? What in the world? So I know this is real because standing over there right before I got up to preach, he come back. Now, you know, I'm going to kill you on that pulpit today. Your, your head's already kind of swirling a little bit. Yeah. I've met you before. You're a spirit of fear and you have torment. If God's going to allow you to kill me, then you go right ahead and do it. So I just leaned over to our good man back there and I said, find me two good intercessors here today. Because I'm telling you when I tell you that the spirit world is watching right now. It understands. I said, just find me two good prayer warriors and let them pray while I preach. And that would cover that. And so I'm coming to this church today to tell you, yes, you're a target. And yes, the spirit of error will constantly come against you. Because it knows your witness and it knows what you represent. And it would glory in its ability to destroy you. But I've come today to tell you. That the Prince of Peace wants to abide in this church. Peace. 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 Woo! And of the increase, and of the increase of his government and peace, one parting thing I want to tell you that the Lord really dealt with me about years ago. Wherever I govern, there's peace. Where there's no peace, I don't govern. And so I don't know, but the last few weeks, I've been asking God, govern my life. Govern every area of my life. Perfect peace have they who keep thy mind, who love thy law, keep thy mind stayed on him. I want to be one with that. I, I want to walk with him, not in disagreement. I want to walk with him in agreement. I want to walk in peace. Lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths, plural paths. And go on down through there. These are paths of peace, and they're paths of righteousness. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, everybody here that really wants to please God ought to have that prayer. Let me walk down those paths of righteousness. And let me walk down those paths of righteousness. Let me walk in peace here today. I don't want to be in conflict. I don't want to be against you, God. I want to be in agreement with you. I want to be one with you. I want to walk in peace where the favor and the blessing of God is. Anybody else? Man, I mean, it's been crazy. A lot of confusion, chaotic. Why don't you find that area and come to God and submit today and say, I want you to govern right here. I want you to govern right here. And I want the Mokita Yashatahaka to take authority over every spirit of fear that has come against this church. Perfect, perfect love.
cast them out. I want you to, I want you to do me a favor. Many of you are already here, but I think it'd be good for as many people as possible to participate. I think it'd be good for all of us to connect here today and for us to really pray together. God, we pray that the Prince of Peace would rule in this church. We pray that the Prince of Peace would abide in this church. We pray that the Holy Ghost, which is the Spirit of Truth, would work in this church. We pray that everything that the book of Acts experienced, the prayer, the doctrine, the miracles, the supernatural, the giving, the love, we pray for it to manifest in this church and that anything that is anti-Christ, we bind in the name of Jesus. Woo! We pray, we intercede for our leaders, we intercede for this church today. We want peace to abide here. We want the Prince of Peace to abide here. We want the Spirit of Truth to abide. Come on, join together and pray. That's it, join together and pray. Woo! That's it, pray in the Holy Ghost.